Hi everyone. Today I'll be discussing the first problem of code forces from infinitive pool. It says Anna and Kati ended up in a secret laboratory. There are A plus B plus C buttons in the laboratory and it turned out that A buttons can only be pressed by Anna, B buttons can only be pressed by Katie, and C buttons can be pressed by either of them. Anna and Katie decided to play a game taking turns pressing these buttons. Anna makes the first turn. Each button can be pressed at most once. So at some point, one of the girls will not be able to make her turn. The girl who cannot press a button determine who will win the game if both will play optimally. So what we can refer uh, from this question is, so for example, when we take, we have three numbers which are given, A, B and C. So for the first case, when A is not equal to B, irrespective of the value of C, Anna will have uh, more chances. So when she'll win. And in the second case, when uh, B is greater than A, KT will win. But what happens when A is equal to B? That is both have the same number of button. In that case, we take account of the additional which are there. That is C. So for example, when C is odd, that is Anna will have more right on C. Like one is left, so that will be gone to Anna. And when C is even, so it will be in pairs. So at the end, KT will get it. So that's why second one will win. And accordingly, uh, with this strategy that we have found, we can write the code. And you can see the pattern here as well. If you see, then uh, for A equal to B, when it is odd, it is first. A equal to B, when it is even, it is the second. And similarly, I'll show you the code for this. So we uh, take A, B and C as input. And accordingly, what we had strategized, a is, if A is greater than B, then it's uh, first. If B is greater than A, then it's second. When A is equal to B, then if C is odd, it is first. If C is even, it is second. Now Hello, I'm Radhis. I'll be giving the editorial for problem B in code forces round 893 division 2. So, first I'll give you the summary of what they want. Uh, there are N benches, which are numbered from 1 to N and there are M cookie sellers. Uh, each cookie seller is located near uh, one of the benches and there is no more than one cookie seller for each bench. So there is a guy, he starts walking from the first bench and he goes to the nth bench. He, pa he uh, can walk between two benches in one minute and he has some cookies with himself. So he'll be eating some cookies on his journey. So mm -hmm. He eats uh, cookies at uh, the benches according to some rules. If there is a cookie seller near the ayath bench, he will uh, eat a cookie. If he has not yet eaten any cookie on his journey, he will uh, also eat a cookie. That basically means whatever happens, whether or not there is a cookie seller at the first position, he will be eating a cookie at the first bench. And also one more condition, uh, if at least D minutes passed since he ate the previous cookie, he will also eat one cookie. So, uh, what we have to do is uh, we have to minimize the number of cookies Petya will eat during this walk. And how do we do that? Uh, what we have to do is we have to remove exactly one cookie seller and we have to minimize the number of cookies that Petya eats on this journey. So, uh, we have to do that and what is the output here? The output is we have to output the minimum number of cookies that Petya can eat if one cookie seller is removed and we also have to find the number of cookie sellers such that if one of them is removed Petya will be eating the minimum number of cookies. So let's say there are like some M cookie sellers and let's say by removing one the minimum number of cookies that he eats is some X. So uh, which are, how many of these M cookie sellers if I remove them uh, then will Petya be eating X cookies. So uh, let us think how do we solve this. So uh, let us see the first example. First example is where there are six benches and there are two cookie sellers and these also these also equal to two. So let us see what this is about. Three, four, five, and six. So uh, he has to eat a cookie at one. That is confirmed. And he also has to eat a cookie at 2. And he also has to eat a cookie at 5. 
and the cookie sellers are at 2 and 5. So now observe that uh, he has to he has to eat a cookie at 1, 2. He does not have to eat a cookie at 3, but he does have to eat a cookie at 4. So let us put a tick here indicating and he does not have to eat a cookie at 6. So uh, what is happening here? He is walking from 1 until 6 and he is eating a total of 4 cookies. Now if we remove 2 what happens is that he eats 1 cookie at 1 and then he doesn't eat anything at 2 he eats at 3 and then nothing at 4 and then at 5 he eats 1 cookie and at 6 he does not eat a cookie. Instead of 2 if we remove if he if we had removed 5 what happens is he eats a cookie here he eats a cookie here and he eats a cookie at 4 and he eats a cookie at 6. So basically the minimum number of cookies he is eating is 3 and this happens for only one cookie server. So what are we basically doing here? So let us say uh, there is a uh, there is two indices A and B and he has to eat a cookie at A and B let us say either by either A is equal to 1 or A is some cookie seller but he has to eat a cookie at A and B. So these are some indices. Now while walking he must also eat a cookie at A plus D and he also must eat a cookie at A plus 2D and etc until we pass B. So uh, by this logic we can actually say that between A and B he will be eating the total of B minus A minus 1 by D cookies. Now uh, this is pretty easy to prove. I won't be proving this. You can try it out. Um, so yeah that is what happens between two places he is eating a cookie. So how does this help us you see? So uh, what we do in this problem is that uh, let us say they gave us some cookie sellers A1, A2 until AM. So uh, what we do is uh, we can initially find uh, the total cookies uh, he must be eating. So the total cookies he must be eating is the initial number of cookies plus the cookies in between the cookie sellers and the places. Also uh, he will also be eating a cookie at the first position if A1 is not equal to 1. Let's just keep that in mind. So uh, by the previous uh, formula we can find out how many cookies he eats between 1 and A1, A1, A2 etc. And also uh, for the last for the last cookie seller what we do is is that a n okay let's not a not a m a m n so a m that's the last cookie seller he must eat a cookie here and then it's fine so uh, for the last cookie seller what we do is that uh, he has to eat a cookie at a m plus d and that goes on so basically uh, in this last place uh, the number of cookies he should be eating is uh, n minus am by d so uh, yeah that's what happens now uh, by using this how do we find the minimum number of cookies he'll be eating if we remove one cookie seller when we remove one cookie seller what change are we making here let us say we are removing some cookie seller which is between two other cookie sellers let's say it's a1 a2 a3 let's say initially he eats x cookies here y cookies here 
after removal of A2, let's say he removes, he eats Z cookies between A1 and A3. So everything else stays the same. The only change that is happening is between A1 and A3. So what we have to do is maximize this decrease. We have to maximize the decrease from x plus y to z. That is what we have to do. So basically what we do is for every place that he is eating a cookie, we just check which one, which ones give the minimum and then we find the frequency for this minimum. So I will show you the code which I have submitted for this. So basically what I have done is, I have uh, created a vector for all the positions that he eats a cookie. So uh, this part is basically uh, due to the fact that whether or not there is a cookie seller at one, he has to eat a cookie at one. And also you can see that I have also added the element n plus 1. Uh, this is to make our calculation a bit easier. As you can see, if I add 1 here and then minus 1 here, it makes this, it does the same. So basically, I am saying that he virtually eats a cookie at the n plus 1th position. So after that, uh, this is the input. I am taking the input here. And then uh, what I am doing here is that if he ate a cookie at if there is a cookie seller at 1 I am just decreasing M and what I want M to uh, uh, denote is that M is the number of cookie sellers except for cookie sellers at 1 so first of all I will try to find out uh, what is the minimum number of cookies if I remove some cookie seller uh, that is not 1 Because anyways, if you remove a cookie seller at 1, it makes no difference. I.e., what I mean to say is, if you remove a cookie seller who is initially at 1, uh, there is uh, no difference in the cookies he makes, he eats. So, that only mat we only remove, we only care about uh, removing cookie seller at 1, if uh, that different, if the minimum difference uh, is just 0. So, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm keeping a max difference, max differential, and I'm looping through all these. Uh, I'm looping through all the cookie sellers, and I'm finding the maximum diff, and I'm keeping track of the frequency. And also, if this max diff was zero, and there's a cookie seller one, then I will uh, increment the frequency even once more. And then af afterwards, I will uh, I will print the minimum cookies he's eating. In it is basically uh, the initial number of cookies he's eating minus that max differential, and this is the frequency. So basically, that's it. Uh, that's the tutorial for question B. I uh, hope you like it. Uh, thank you. The C problem of uh, from 893 W. The question says that Alex got a new game for GCP communication for the birthday present. Each round of this game proceeds as following. First, Alex chooses a permutation A1 to AN of integers 1 to N. Then for each I, he has an uh, uh, integer DI, which is the GCD of AI and AI mod N plus 1, which is calculated, which is basically uh, the consecutive uh, AI and AI plus 1 GCD. Okay, and then the score of each round is the number of distinct numbers among V1 till Dn. Now, Alex has already played several rounds, so he decided to find a permutation such that it has the largest score possible. And how is this uh, score calculated? The score is the number of distinct, uh, distinct Di's. Now, we recall that GCD uh, is uh, the of numbers x and y is x mod y. And a permutation is uh, of an array with n distinct uh, integers from 1 to n. So, for this particular problem, the idea that we will use is 
Now, what we want is that the number of distinct GCDs should be maximum. So, what we can do is, what will be our idea is to keep the factors together. That is, for example, if I have 2 in that particular permutation, then I will try to keep 2 with 4, 4 with 8. And similarly, if I have 3, then I will try to keep 3 with 6 and 6 with 9. For example, in this case, I will have the GCD 2 and for 4 and 8, I will have the GCD 4. And similarly, for 3 and 6, I will have 3 and 6 and 9, I will have 3 again. So, uh, if I keep the factors together, the thing which I observe is that I will have the maximum number of divisors uh, in that. So, for example, if I take consider the case of n is equals 5, what happens is, if I keep the divisor pair 2 and 4 together, uh, and 3 and 6 is not there because uh, it's still 5 only. So, I will start with 1, 2 and its divisor 4. Then uh, I have 3, 6 is not there, so 5 directly. Now, let's take a bigger number. For example, in the case of 8. 8, what we do is, we'll uh, keep all the factors together to have distinct divisors. So, what, how we start is 1. 1 ke liye we don't have any. 2. We have 4 and 8. So, we keep 2, 4 and 8 together. So, this 2 and 4 gives us 2, 4 and 8 gives us 4 and this has 1. So, we uh, till now we have 3 in common and now 8 and 3, 1, 3 and 6 will give 3 and then 1. So, uh, we now we have 1, 2, 4 and 3, 4 di di distinct divisors. So, in that case 4 is the maximum thing, if you can check for this particular permutation. And similarly, you can see in the question as well, uh, for the case of 7, you can see that they have tried to keep the divisors together. For, so, for in this example, 3 and 6 are together. And then for 6 and 4 also, what you, uh, 6 and 4 also, you will get 2 only. So, it makes sense to keep uh, either 2 or 4 together or 6 or 4 together, both will be valid. So, uh, using this uh, ideology, how we can quote this is, so we start with two uh, vectors A and C, uh, A will be my answer vector and C will be the vector which has all numbers 1, uh, 2, N, uh, whichever uh, numbers we require and accordingly uh, I use a basic for loop to just check the condition when it is a factor and then accordingly I will push it inside and then I will output the uh, vector a, uh, whatever size it is, uh, and then uh, this is the most important step that we use. That is, we I for if c of it's not equal to c of i, I uh, do k equal i, then k is less than n, and k uh, is equals k into two, uh, and then c of k I'll incre increment it by one, and then I add that element uh, k to a and, and then I output the permutation which I have obtained using that keeping factors together strategy. That's it the, for this issue.